before. But first, let's share this story by our correspondent, Femi Akonde. He was there. Let's go. The Vice President, Kashim Shetima, presides over a virtual National Economic Council meeting. The governors and other members of the council in attendance approved the implementation of IDICE, a federal government program to promote investment in information and communications technology and creative industry. This is part of the agenda to create more sustainable jobs in post-COVID-19. Remember that I noted in our last meeting that we must evolve with the changing world. That is why we are providing incentives for the emergence of enterprises that not only accept the exploding population of our youth, but also incorporate innovative digital technologies to prepare them for the dynamics of the present and the uncertainties of the time. Security is a bigger problem. But it appears the earlier excitement and advocacy for the creation of state police has lost steam. Out of 36 states, 20 states have not submitted their report. The vice president is not impressed with the foot dragging and urged states yet to make inputs to expedite action to enable robust deliberations on the subject matter at the next council meeting. During the meeting, Chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, gave an update on the ad hoc Committee on Economic Affairs' main objective to develop a feasible and effective roadmap for addressing economic issues affecting Nigerians at the national and sub-national levels. Given the importance, the critical importance of this project for food security, for job creation and for helping youths and uh, women in particular. He emphasized that uh, all hands should be on deck and no effort should be spared to ensure that we successfully implement the special agricultural um, processing zones in all the states that express interest in so doing. The Vice President urged financing partners of Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones program to fast-track implementation of Component 2 to boost food security and actualize the Renewed Hope agenda. The VP told the governors to be consistent with implementation of policies that will benefit citizens. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. All right, many thanks, Femi. Um, Jide, but it's the man on the street would ask, so why would the other governors be pussyfooting? Well, um, they are just taking their time, you know. Um, when you are coming up with an idea like this, mm. you have to take your time, think through it thoroughly. The dynamics are different from state to state, or let me say geopolitical zone to geopolitical zone. Look at Kano, for example. Kano may not feel a pressing need for state police because the problems that states like Kasina, states like Kaduna, states like Zamfara, states like Sokoto, and to some extent, Kebi have. Kano does not have it. Jigawa does not have it. So the urgency that the governor of Kasina, for example, we are not less than 12 local governments so far in the hands of bandits. Yeah. It won't be that same sense of urgency that the governor of Jigawa will face. How many times do you read about people being kidnapped in Jigawa State or even in Kano. Yeah. It really happens. The same thing in Lagos. We don't hear of buses being hijacked and bus passengers being taken into the mm. bush in Lagos. Mm. Our own uh, crimes are peculiar to us. <laughs> Carjacking, uh, robbing people in traffic, cultism. Yeah. Yeah. But 
people feel the terrible pang of banditry, those states, including Taraba and the Northeast, mm. honestly, they would want this thing to kick off quickly. You see, you see that some state of the Northwest, some more. So now, the governor of that state will feel the need for state police with their enabling laws that will permit their operatives to carry assault uh, rifles yeah, assault rifle, yeah. to be in place. Because without harming them with the caliber of weapons okay. that these bad boys go around with, you are just wasting lives because these mm. boys can't stand up to them. Mm. You can imagine going to a place like Zurumi in Zamfara where there is a huge presence of bandits and they've always operated there. Remember the case of two girls, twin sisters that were kidnapped uh, a couple of years ago. It was in Zurumi. Now you go, you went there, you said you wanted to go and uh, deal decisively with bandits. You went to their camp with what kind of weapons? Hmm. Against guys who carry uh, GPMG hmm. all over the place? With guys who have, uh, uh, what was it called? Rocket propelled grenades. Rocket propelled grenades are meant to disable armor tanks. Hmm. But these boys fire it at human beings. So is it those kind of guys that you want to fight with them guns? So the law, as the governors are asking now, the structure of the current policing uh, system that we have has to change, one, then the law must be amended to enable to enable these guys that's it. carry the kind of arms that can defend mm. them against the bandits. Yeah. So yeah. once you are able to do that and you give them good training, they will be able to uh, get the job done. Emeka, but as we speak, time is of the essence. Yeah, time is of the essence, but it's very important also for us to realize that um, it's a constitutional issue and you cannot rush constitutional issues. You saw throughout eight years of uh, the former president, Buhari's tenure, one thing he had actually said he would do, he couldn't do, he couldn't achieve it, and that was local government autonomy. Even, you know, while he was campaigning, he talked, he spoke a lot about local government autonomy, he tried. Signed an executive order, did everything, no way, it didn't work out. Because states, in the successive constitution amendments, they didn't allow it to sail through. Even judicial autonomy, no way. So you can see that it's about <coughs> the interests of the states. And then the other thing is about funding. Mm. Yes, we know that even the existing uh, police, it's... Uh, to a large extent, you know, you have to commend the states mm. for providing vehicles, providing, you know, um, helping to build police stations, helping to, you know, provide innovation and things like that, you know, provide um, support to for the police. The states have done a lot, but that is different from donating resources is different from you actually carrying the burden directly. Mm. Many. States cannot have not been able I, to I pay. I get your argument. Yeah. I've not been able to pay the minimum wage of eighteen thousand. Not the talk of the current one of thirty thousand. And then you want to put policing on them. Policing requires a lot of money. It's not just something. You are not posting megats or security guards at the gate. You are posting people who will be involved in intelligence gathering, who will move, who will have patrol vans. They will be on the move regularly. They will. A lot is involved administratively and all of that. So it has to be, they have to think it through. Because <coughs> you, can, you can toy with the salaries of civil servants, which is wrong. Toy with pensions, but don't toy with the money of security, security men. Security folks, yeah. Don't toy with the welfare of security folks. Because we've seen it again and again. Mm. Even with even with the government's intention that let us fund, the, we want to fund the security agencies, we want to do all of that. But you still have rogue elements. Then... You now come to a situation where you owe state police one month, two months, three months. You're looking for trouble because you already have well-trained people with. So you have to think of all this. Then the relationship with the federal police. Yeah. What will be remaining of the federal so police? It's, it's, it's part and of the, other things. So the states. Part of the content of yes, the law. The states will have to think through and then consult their houses of assembly 
And then, of course, I believe they will reach a consensus. Okay, then. Uh, whilst the remaining 20 states plus the FCT are making haste slowly, uh, we wish that you give a sec second serious thought to it. Time is of the essence. Now to our next story. You know, it's important to stress that mining sites are the entire area of land upon which mining operations take place. Uh, the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Mr. Dele Adlake, has unveiled mine marshals, I should say, whose major assignment would be to secure mining sites nationwide so as to prevent illegal mining activities. There's an initial 2,200 member mine marshals as we speak. The task of unsettling illegal miners is never going to be an easy one. After all, the uncertainty that comes with change is frightening, but then it happens increment, incrementally, Emeka. Yes, it's a, good, <coughs> it's a good initiative. My only hope is that the mine marshals will not become a part of the problem. That's my hope. Or hampered by... Um, I'm mean, becoming a part of the problem mm. because these are security agents. You know how many states have set up special tax forces on petroleum products, on petroleum diversion, on the oil theft and all of that. But what happened? At the end of the day, many of these tax forces even became worse than the problem they were set up yeah. to tackle. So the thing is that, yes, I commend <coughs> the Minister of Solid Minerals, Minerals Development, I'm sorry, Mr. Dele Alake and his uh, interior ministry counterpart, Mr. Uh, mm. Ojo. I mean, if you ask a lot of Nigerians, you hear they say that Ojo seems to be <coughs> the minister who is actually uh, doing things, you know, striking the right notes. Well, lucky, uh, you know, lucky for good for him. Now, the point is that they must do a lot in terms of controlling, monitoring. Mm -hmm. controlling these people. Because, you see, solid minerals are actually a veritable source of revenue for the nation. To allow illegal miners move about, you know, pillage the nation's solid mineral resources, minerals resources, is not a good idea. They must be put in check. The nation must be able to get revenue due to it. As of right, so I think it is good, it's a, it's a welcome development, and I hope uh, that um, they will also deploy technology. They will not yeah. depend only on manual, on manual uh, securing of uh, the mining sites, but will also deploy necessary important technology to help to ensure that these things are yeah. brought to the barest minimum. GD, uh, one word on the uh, mouth of so many interested parties here is that of empowering states to exploit minerals in their domain, you know, to advantage. I must not fail to mention bitumen, for instance. Undo State, uh, we understand, would have the second largest deposit of bitumen in the whole world, but cannot exploit, if you see what I mean. Yes, yeah, well, that's... Um a discussion for another day. Mm. The <clears throat> mineral resources are on the exclusive list, but what we see is foreigners, especially the Chinese, coming into our country to steal our mineral resources. At will. Something At will, yeah. has got to be done about that. There is a documentary that the TVC uh, News to went to um, Ocean State to do hmm. because three local governments in Ocean State are very rich in gold deposits. But Chinese, the Chinese, they are there taking advantage of greedy and compromised traditional rulers, continue to mine gold illegally in ocean states. They've caused serious ecological and environmental problems. Because unlike Zamfara, where 
you could actually pick gold on the um, surface of the soil. In Oshun, you have to dig in some places up to 80 meters, 100 meters before you strike gold. And these guys are digging everywhere, creating lakes upon lakes and leaving those communities worse off. Yeah. In fact, the, the Atogs made attempts to beat up our crew when they went to do that story. You mean the, the miners' thugs? Yes, the uh, Chinese, yeah, the the Chinese, Chinese hired Chinese, thugs. Yes. They hired Nigerians as thugs <laughs> who ran after our people with the intention of uh, getting hold of them and beating them up for going to expose the nonsense that was happening there. So, and you go to Nasarawa State, foreigners are mining our natural resources. Our country is blessed. In Zamfara there, as I said earlier, you don't need to dig. Zamfara is, is, is richer than uh, Oshun State in gold. You don't need to dig that far. There was a time it rained, and uh, the rainwater washed off the, uh, the, surface. the surface of the soil. Yeah. People were picking gold. They ran to the site. The governor then, um, uh, Matawali, had to send police to chase people away because within a short time, the whole place was already mm. crowded. As expected. And people were picking gold. Mm. They don't need to dig. In some cases, you just dig less than a meter. You have it. Mm. If you are lucky, you don't even need to dig that far. That is yeah. how blessed Zamfara State is in terms of gold. And there's lithium as well. You go to some local governments in, uh, in, in Zamfara, lithium, they have lithium in abundance. So we have to make money from the resources that it has been arrested mining Tatalite. Who gave you the permission, permission to go to Zanf I mean, uh, Taraba to mine Tatalite. He couldn't, he acted like he could not speak a word of English. <laughs> so, th that is why we need to police those sites. But the problem also is, you see these states, Niger, uh, Zamfara, even Kaduna, mm. because of insecurity, it would take more than Having these uh, marshals uh, yeah. to stop the activities of illegal miners because some of those places where they are mining stuff, there are even no go areas to even the some military. of our security. Did it, did it, this is the so time. How do you then this, go this, there? This is the time you expect state police to, to come into the picture. State police, yeah. see, state police, not just state police will help us solve <laughs> problems. But let us not yes. believe that it is the silver bullet yes. that, that will defeat that, that is very insecurity true. in our very country. True. Mm. Very because true. The, the state police will never be better harmed than the, the federal police. army. Okay, the general army, yes. I doubt, well, maybe they, they could be better armed than the police because the police is actually states that are arming the police mm. now. You know, I wonder how the police can function in Lagos if Lagos didn't have the security trust fund that ensures that they are provided with weapons, with the things that they need, including uh, uh, patrol boats and all that. So, uh, are these the marshals who are saying no, no? I think they, I didn't see this event, but these are lucky. Well, be, uh, be, that's a lucky now. Uh, so, yeah. They could well be the people that is talking. I didn't see the story, but I have every reason to believe that these are the people mm. I was talking about. I see his determination. Yeah. You I'm, understand? I'm told they are the one. Yes, okay. Mm. Um, it, it shows we, he cannot Please, be uh, doing, a lucky he's reviewing yeah. the parade. So they have to be his people. You know? So what we are saying is look, we will need the armed forces with all the powers that they've got to help us in Niger State, for example, I'm using Niger as an example, mm. because I know that Niger is full of bandits. There are at least eight local governments in Niger where bandits are very active. Rijau, Magama, all of those local governments, very active. Bandits are very active. So what do we do? 
we need much more. The minister has to be supported because he needs more than this 2,200 uh, yes. uh, mm. to police uh, our mining sites and ensure that those stealing from us are stopped in their tracks. And I'm saying those Chinese, for example, who are doing this to us, we've got to fish them out and bring them to justice. Who gave them the latitude to go to a place like uh, um, Nasara, for example, and start mining with reckless abandon? Who gave them the latitude to go to um, Taraba and start mining just the way they like? And then, who has the power to mine gold in a state so rich sometimes in gold it, it, and sometimes, lithium like Zamfara? Sometimes, sometimes you think we are becoming a an annoyingly permissive society. We allow, you see, we allow a lot of things to happen. Yeah. I shouldn't. First happen. Yeah. Gold, gold. In the global market, the price of gold is very stable, very consistent. Mm. It doesn't suffer the volatility of oil. Yeah. I mean, South Africa, where, where do they, where do they make, how do they make their money? Is it not gold and diamond? The same thing with Botswana. And these are countries, they are doing well. So we can make a lot more. We can make a lot more than we are making if we put structures in place and we stop those stealing from us from getting away with the, with the crime. That is, in my view, so it's a laudable objective. I see it's determination to put an end to the nonsense that have been going on for years. Yeah. There yeah. are certain steps being taken in this administration that you must commend. Because before now, nobody thought that, look, we could do this. But you see, those we guys are well armed. In that direction. Now. Yes, we just didn't, we just felt, mm, let us just carry mm. on. But we see some level of seriousness. And I believe that the more they challenge themselves, the more they come out with ideas that will help us uh, get yeah. the best out of our country. Gideon Emeka, I, I dare think that if we start punishing bad behavior, we'll get somewhere. No, this is more than bad behavior. This is mm -hmm. outright criminality. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we, we just, it's, it's not just about uh, bad behavior. These people are stealing with impunity. And the problem, we should not allow certain things to fester. Because they take a life on their own, of their own and become so difficult to dislodge. Okay then, we'll take a breather now, but please stay with us. We'll return very shortly. story that calls. At other times, the people just want to be heard. Continue like this. Their voices were echoing through time itself. We haven't done anything. If the, the tide is high, everybody run for safety. Their tears leave a sweet sour taste for all. Their demands, a familiar call beckoning for change. In our world, no one expects a disaster to happen. But when it does, we'll be there to x-ray all sides, from the east to the west, north and south. Committee Forum will examine the oddities and challenges to economic development, as well as issues yearning for government intervention. Watch fresh episodes of Committee Forum. All right then, welcome back. So we'll keep it going. You know, it's a roller coaster ride for Nigeria in the real estate industry as the sector has witnessed remarkable growth and challenges. Amid disturbing cases of quackery and attendant collapsed buildings, the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, has urged Nigerian Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers to ensure best practices and use of technology. At the inauguration of a new national headquarters for the institution in Abuja, Governor Obaseki and experts stress the need for professionals to leverage on technology to modernize the real estate uh, industry and attract foreign investment. 
Let's share the story by TVC News' uh, Habida Lawa. Let's go there. The real estate industry in Nigeria has witnessed remarkable growth over the years, transforming into a dynamic and vibrant sector. Despite its growth, the real estate industry in Nigeria faces several challenges, including limited access to financing, inadequate infrastructure, land use issues, and bureaucratic bottlenecks pose obstacles to development. The president of the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, John Bull Anaevo, believes these challenges also present opportunities for innovation and investment. The rising middle class, increasing urbanization, and a growing need for affordable housing create a fertile ground for real estate entrepreneurs and investors to explore untapped markets. Advocacy, advocacy, we'll still be doing that. I will still be doing our normal training. We have various trainings for our members, then we we'll keep engaging the government or all, all agencies, you know, on the issue of fighting corruption. Incidentally, at the NIPS uh, where I'm attending right now, my topic is asset valuation as a tool to fighting corruption. For Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki, he says foreign direct investment has played a crucial role in the modernization of Nigeria's real estate sector. International investors bring capital, expertise and best practices, driving innovation and raising industry standards. The dire economic situation which we find ourselves today in the wider economy, such as inflation and the attendant increased cost of living, will have impacts on the work which you do as professionals. In fact, the raging debates on the price of commodities, especially building materials, demand even more ingenuity from members of this great institution. Improving market transparency and data availability will be key focus in the coming years. While appreciating the role of the Nigerian institution of essay surveyors and valuers in the development of the Nigerian's real estate sector, it is worthy to also note that the country is currently contending with a number of issues in the built environment such as quackery, building collapses, as well as real estate scams. Habida Lawal, TVC News, Abuja. All right, thank you, Habida. Uh, so it's time we stopped playing catch up. Yes. I, I rather like the the I, reference to uh, I, using technology and all that. Yes. To enhance the business, there the were, sector. There were some some of the things that they said that uh, were not even captured in the reports. You know, in the two and a half minutes story, you can't see everything. Mm. One of the big takeaways for me from this event was the realization that through that sector we can actually even attract foreign direct investment. Investors are coming into Nigeria and investing in our assets. Even the CBN admitted that it is one of the reasons they now they are experiencing improved liquidity that added to the um, diaspora remittances, yes. Because the Naira is weak at this time. More and more diasporans, more and more Nigerians uh, based on working abroad are sending in money. Yeah. So we are getting a lot more diaspora yes, remittances. Somebody was asking the question on Facebook, ah, let's ask them who. Where they said they have paid the uh, uh, forest backlog. Uh, where are they getting the money from? Whereas even in the press statement, they mentioned, <laughs> because some are too lazy to read even a short story to its end. They are speculating, uh, where are they getting the, let's ask them, who, uh, where are they getting the money from? And they, they stated it there. Foreign injection of capital into our economy is improving. The uh, diaspora remittances improving, yeah, because people can see that this is the time to actually send in 
money because you are going to for, get for, because for the support, currency is weaker now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was that. So at this event, they were told that look, you need to modernize your processes. You need to embrace best practices so that the real estate sector in Nigeria can become attractive even to foreign investors. And it's possible. Especially in this area, in these days, when we talk about housing deficits, you know, across the country. Yes. Yeah. The f foreigners can come and invest in that sector. Mm. In Kenya, foreigners came to invest in their media. You can imagine, that's why Kenya has the best uh, media sector in terms of um, quality of what they do than other countries of the world. Mm. Before the um, CNN Multi-Choice Award was uh, stopped, the Kenyans were dominating. They would dominate TV category, dominate in the print, leave the crumbs for others mm -hmm. because the media sector in their country had improved tremendously because of the coming of foreigners to invest in the media. Who says we can't have a situation like that in Nigeria if we clean up our act and we make things better? Who says they cannot come and invest in, in the media in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that we are talking about with the uh, real estate sector. They have to take collection of data seriously. They have to take technology seriously, leverage on technology to improve the way they do things. They have to eliminate quackery. Mm. Why are buildings collapsing? People don't want to use those who are qualified. Yeah. And when buildings to collapse, spend money. yes, when to buildings build. collapse, take away the license of the engineers and other people involved, take away their license, punish them. We didn't do that even with the, with the um, uh, synagogue church collapse mm. Mm. because the coroner's report showed clearly that they the, didn't, the, 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 the structure was defective. And why would the structure be defective? The blame has to be shared between the regulators and the uh, contractors and other people yeah. hired. You saw when that high-rise building gave way on Lagos Island. Yeah, yeah. The, I think uh, uh, the Nigerian the architects as a group were very angry. They complained that even the way the building was planned, it was inevitable that it would come down. Hmm. So what I'm, where I'm driving at, if we clean up our arts, if we embrace technology, we embrace best global practices, even in that sector, foreign investment will come in. That sector will become more vibrant and the players will have the chance to even make more money. But we are always reluctant to take those big steps, mm. you know? Yet we want big results. The Chinese, when, when people were talking about taking big steps, the Chinese said, no, we will take giant leap. <laughs> that was what the Chinese said many years ago. And we can see that the Chinese indeed took giant yeah. leaps instead of taking giant steps, yeah. you know? So we must not... Uh, um, limit ourselves because the capacity is there and this yeah. is a great country you have a market for virtually everything everything the, 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 the largest in Africa. Estate, everything emeka you, you, you know when people outside and some on the inside who know say we are a sleeping giant they know what they're saying well uh, well okay i I, 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 I concede it to them but i think the giant is not really sleeping. It's just that um, we are underwhelming in many areas. We, part of the problem too is the technical capacity. We, have, we are deficient in technical capacity in many things. If you look at our budgets, <clears throat> for instance, you see them littered with projects. What, look at the ministries that are expected to implement 
these projects. They don't have the technical capacity. Mm. They don't have the requisite numbers of staff. They may not even have staff in certain areas to do these things. But you just litter the budget with projects, and then you go and see some of the projects, they are just halfway done and abandoned. Mm. Then we do it again also look at the critical issues. Look at this uh, built industry, for instance. You know, one problem with building collapse is that Nigerians, we like to follow the trend. The trend is that, okay, people are, you know, high rise, you know, high rise buildings, multi story buildings will fetch you a lot of money. So the co people compromise the strength. Yeah, they compromise the strength mm -hmm. of the decking, of the slabs. They compromise the kind of iron, the kind of iron rods to be used, the quantity of cement to be used. You will hear people making the argument now that bamboo, the use of bamboo is better than, <laughs> uh, uh, than, than, than the use of iron rods. Well, I think or it's safer. As reinforcement? As, 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 <laughs> yes, for, to, for decking. I haven't, the argument has been, has been raging online. I, I thought maybe you they know? were thinking of using it for scaffolding. No, no, scaffolding no, no, no. They've been using it for scaffolding. I'm talking of for decking instead of iron rods. It's been a training topic. But, and, Emeka, can, and, you, and can, can, you, can, you, can you rationalize you that? Can you, can there you, are people can you who actually are, use that as a no, There are people, engineers, who have made arguments for it. But there are engineers who have said, no, that it is better to still stick with iron rods. Now, what kind of iron rods? Where you are supposed to use, uh, where you are supposed to use 12 mm, 16 mm, you see people using 10 mm. You see the, 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 the thickness, the, cost. the thickness and all mm. of that. Yes, and mm. many a time, it's the owners who cause this problem. It's not even the contractors. It's the owner. They say, ah, no, no, no. I want to spread my resources across. I want to launch this estate. They've already got, you know you don't have enough money to develop an estate. You've gone on radio and TV. You're either advertising that so-and-so estate, so-so, so-and-so, and so you People have started subscribing and... And then you disappear. You disappear. Uh, you want uh, to make money. So you just quickly set up one or two, some structures to get more money. Need to identify and, they are, and they are those, defective. Those fake people. Yeah, they, they are defective. So government must also look at, be, look beyond just the practitioners in the industry, to yeah. owners, mm. to the investors. You must vet the investors. You must vet the owners to be sure of their when, motives. When, when the quacks take over, they, they, they are going to mess yeah. more, more things up. So a lot us. of things. Where you know, for instance, you can do better with bungalows. With bungalows, why are you now pushing to have story buildings yeah. when you know you cannot put in the required so you think the a, a building that the foundation, the superstructure was not meant to carry mm. different floors or multiple floors. You now decided on your own to introduce. You, you, you that you was what you, happened with the synagogue. That's it. Yes, it was, I was going there. You know. Meant to take it a, a floor, but to, they, they to, to and you know, raise it to friends fight. of the owner may come and say, I don't want you look at the foundation. Ah, are you going to just stop at three stories? This foundation can carry up to seven stories so that you make more money hmm. and then they compromise quality, integrity, and human lives. Okay, but but I, I know that you can't cheat and get a get away scot free, you cannot cheat and get it because science is proving to us that. What's wrong is wrong. Is wrong. What's right is right. right. Okay, need we say more? Now let's uh, take on the last story for today. You know, the tendency for more strike actions in our country becomes more pronounced as efforts by the federal government to prevent them fade away. We hear that the meeting between the federal government and the leadership of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and the Non-Academic Staff Union of of universities, NASU, ended in a deadlock. Now, both parties could not reach an agreement, and the national president of SANU, Mohamed Ibrahim, insists the strike by them continues. Recall that the union commenced a seven-day warning strike on Monday. We'll share the aspects of that story uh, again with you. Sharon Ijasan has come back with the story. Let's go there. It all started during the administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari when the government evoked a no work, no pay policy against striking members of non-academic staff 
in public universities, which lasted for four months. Non-payment of the withheld salaries prompted members of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities, NASU, and the National Association of Academic Technologies, NAT, at the University of Lagos, Unila, to embark on a protest. During the protest, the university workers carried placards with various inscriptions about their demands. Speaking with TVC News, the leaders of the unions expressed hope that the federal government will order the payment of their withheld salaries. There was an agreement that was signed. Apart from saying that they were going to pay those four-month salaries, they said there was a non-victimization clause that any of our members that partook in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the strike was not going to be punished and was not going to be victimized. So by not paying us our four-month salaries, I did not victimize us. Our appeal to them is that they should just resolve and pay us these four months with their salaries. As you can see them, they are with us because those are our strengths. Without them, we will not be here. They are in, we are, they are, they are in support, full compliance, 100%. That's why they are still here up to now. The strike is going to be on till midnight, 12 midnight on Sunday. They singled out one of the sister union and paid four months salaries pending the remaining one. The SANU, the NAT, and NASU have not been paid a dime. And we went on the same agitation. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, released the payment of without salaries of the academic staff about a month ago. Now, non-academic staff who also embarked on an industrial action in April 2022 are now calling on the federal government to please release their withheld salaries. Sharon Ijasson, TVC News, Lagos. Okay then, many thanks, uh, Sharon. Uh, Emeka, these are man-made problems. Well, uh, you, you expect friction between government and um, uh, labor unions from time, from time to time. You, these things are unavoidable because uh, demands are always there. And then government has its policies which, all, which will not sit well I mean, with, com competing with, demands. With, with the unions, yes, all the time. And so uh, I think this issue is a straightforward issue. They're talking about their salary areas and they're saying don't victimize them for going on strike. I think it will, the shutdown for the last few days hasn't helped anybody. You know, I think even it has hurt the government more. Right now, the government needs all the goodwill it can muster uh, because of the uh, problems, the, the socioeconomic uh, problems it's facing right now. So I don't think. The government should allow something like this to stay for long. You can yeah. sit with them, let, let them be paid. There are ways by which government can settle them. And I appeal to the government, please settle them so that, you know, our academic, uh, so that our institutions, the activities in our institutions will not be disrupted. And then our children can keep going to school. It's my special appeal to the government. Yeah. Actually... I heard them talking about um, um, pleading with government not to victimize anybody. There was a non-victimization clause and all that. What has happened is not an attempt to victimize anyone. In fact, if anyone was supposed to be victimized, it would have been Nasu. Because this action was um, triggered by Nasu. Nasu yes. Yes. The other unions simply joined. And the ones who said they were not going to join, Konwa, they suffered the same fate as the people who joined. <laughs> because nobody was paying Konwa's salary at the time when the universities were shut. Mm. So this, there was a mistake made to not pay Sanu and others at the time Asu was paid. That mistake has to be rectified at the office of the chief of staff. This is not a complicated matter. If you could pay ASU mm. that went on strike, because it was called ASU strike, ASU strike, ASU strike. Absolutely, yes. We were not hearing Sanu strike, 
um, Nasu uh, strike. Uh, not strike. Not strike. Not, not, yeah. It was Asu strike. President Tinobu had in his magnanimity decided that, okay, go and pay Asu four months salary. Usually, they don't pay everything that is owed them mm. when they did not, when they were on strike at the same yeah. time. I've never seen where they simply pay everything as once. The president said, okay, let's pay uh, four months. How these uh, left unions Sunday. were left out, yeah. you can only blame it on inefficiency within government because you cannot rationalize it. And I, I will not agree that it was an attempt to victimize. No. Mm -hmm. Because if you are to victimize, you should victimize those who started the strike. Yes. Not people who are merely accessories mm. to, uh, to the strike in the <laughs> real sense of yeah. the word. Some of them were even going to work. Look at what happened in Oye. They are trading blames now that the student who died, died because there was nobody to attend to, 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 uh, to the student. You know, because of uh, they, need, they needed help because of uh, this strike by mm -hmm. uh, by the, those you know. So, government shouldn't waste time on this kind of matter. They had a meeting in which the two ministers of education were present. The PAMSEC was present. The directors in the ministry were present. Yet they could not resolve mm -hmm. these issues. What is the minister of labor doing, for example? Is there Why would the minister of labor? allow this strike to even happen in the first place. So, I don't like a situation in which everything we just say, okay, President Inubu. President Inubu is one person. He has people around him to make things work. We can't bring his name into every issue. If there was a clerical error made that effectively left out these people, it has to be sorted out. Yeah. Immediately. And yeah, I had, I had also about. that the mistake was made, and that's why I'm talking about inefficiency in government. A mistake was made even in the computation of what should go to them. Where even um, ASU claims arising from ASU cooperative and all that were lumped up with the salaries of, uh, of these uh, unions. And then the figure got bloated to about 80 million. By the time you remove all of those claims that have nothing to do with salary, um, uh, withholding tax, all kinds of things that they added that ought not to have been there. By the time you remove it, the claims will come to just 32 billion instead of 80 billion. Look at the difference. It's a massive difference. I'm telling you what, what is going on. So now, instead of all of those things, housing fund, cooperatives, societies, uh, bank loans, and all of those things that were added to these claims, mm. that effectively bloated the figure, they should remove those things. And there was no reason to add ASU cooperative claims to, to SANU. To, to Sanu. No reason in the world. I don't know who was responsible for this kind of thing mm. and what that person seeks to, to achieve. Take out all those things, limit it to the, the 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 demand for salary that they are making pay the salary, salary yeah. and let's let's have a industrial harmony let's have peace in our yeah. university it's as yeah. simple as that it's yeah. not even an issue in fact i i, I cannot believe that the, the, even the warning strike was allowed to take place mm. that shouldn't have been anything for look for the money pay this guy since you have shown um a compassion by paying as as of four months despite the former administration invoking the no work, no rule yeah. uh, thing. No work, no pay. pay them, no work, no, no pay, pay rule. Pay them what is due to them. It is not their fault that ASU went on strike. And if you must pay ASU, ASU individuals do not have two heads. If you pay ASU, if you paid ASU, then pay SANU. It's as simple as that. And NASU. Pay, and pay, NASU uh, and NAT. And, 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 and not yes. Mm. No, they generally they just say Sanu. They are the most popular. <laughs> Nobody even knows that not uh, this is uh, Sanu that people know. The not standard they're uh, Greek to me. But Emeka, you know, as it is, it is not difficult to find 
a middle course. Very simple. That, that's very simple. Most resolve, of these problems. Resolve, that, no need for a middle course. Go that, ahead. Just go, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Pay that so. And pay them. You know? If an error was made, correct the error. There's an error. And let, now they've done the warning strike. They said it will end by midnight on Sunday. Sunday, yeah. And then some people will sit back and maybe wait again. Until no, they called them and they kept giving assurance. And those guys are saying, look, tell us effectively. When you when will pay us. Pay. Things are difficult. Don't people give us money. assurances. Hmm. Give them their they don't want to be given assurances. Yes. assurances, 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 assurances not promises do not translate ah. to money. To money. They, they know uh -huh. the belly full. Oh, oh, they so have to pay these hard times. times. <laughs> you know, these hard things times. are so difficult now. Yeah. So pay, just, don't, don't give the assurances. Give them a definitive date. All right, then. Only fresh meeting and say, gentlemen, yeah. we are going to pay you so, so, so time. They are not happy to go on strike. Nobody is happy Nobody. to go on strike. Mm. Mm. That's a fact. Okay, I, and so this notion that the only language government understands is a strike action. It appears some people in government also enjoy it. Okay, then. We, we must go. Uh, let's thank you for your time. Jide, many thanks for your time. Thanks. And Emika, many thank thanks Thank you very too. much. So thank you. We are done. And uh, if you missed any part of this broadcast, not to worry. Join us later tonight at 11 for our repeat broadcast. And of course, on Sunday, we expand the field for you from 1.30 to 3.30 for the program. And uh, we are also on YouTube at youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Citizen Jones Hussein. Bye-bye now. Take care.